evening, night. My name is Chelsea, if you're new here. I really, really wanted to do this video um, because I just saw a need for it. I remember getting the news that we were having our first child and feeling totally unprepared and just shocked with the news. Of course, there's the things that you can physically prepare for, but I'm talking mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. Uh, so I wanted to touch on those four things kind of categorized in this video. And if you're already a mom, maybe some things you can relate to and give yourself some grace for. So before we get into it, I thought this was really fitting to share the sponsor for this particular video, which is ExpressVPN. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of what a VPN is, but it stands for Virtual Private Network. ExpressVPN really helps to put a stop between online hackers and your information being sold to different companies to try to target you and the things you search and the things you think about, basically, because our phones are so smart these days. And I love ExpressVPN specifically because it's super easy to use. So you just download it on your phone or your computer, you tap a button, and then it's turned on. It's super, super simple. But I just really believe in taking back the control and so much of what is just freely given to big tech these days. Like, they control so much of the narrative of social media, what we're shown on our phones, the ads that we're targeted with. So if you're curious on how ExpressVPN actually protects you from all of this, they are amazing at masking your IP address, which is kind of like your digital phone number and something that big tech can use to personally identify you. So this makes the activity that you have on your phone and your laptop more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. So it's just really, really safe to have a VPN and that's why I love ExpressVPN, voted number one by Tech Radar of all of VPNs out there. So I'm going to leave a link down in the description for three months free, or you can go to expressvpn.com forward slash Hearst for three months free. Again, I'll leave it down linked in the description and you should totally try it out. I just remember having a lot of questions that I felt like no matter who I asked, even if it was a mom, they wouldn't be able to specifically answer for me because I would have a different reaction and handle being a mom differently than they would. But I was reflecting on how his first birthday was coming up and how I wish I had all this stuff fresh on my mind for other moms who are about to step into it. So I hope this is ministry in a way to some of you who are walking through a similar season. But yeah, the physical side of things, I personally wish that I knew that like it was totally 100% okay to be exhausted and never have experienced that level of exhaustion and to do something about it, like to, to accept help. But almost everything in you wants to like take control of everything that you can. This may not be your case, but was the case for me. So in the newborn stage, I wish that I had people set up family like planned for like the first six weeks to just come and visit and help out around the house because physically your body's healing, you're getting kind of used to a new rhythm of life, at least for a small speck of time in the grand scheme of things. So I wish I would have prepared ahead of time for the physical side of things as far as having people set up to help me heal and to help me um, just get better and to get more used to this um, pace. I also wish I would have known more about breastfeeding before I gotten into the process, um, especially now that there's like a formula shortage and it's a nationwide emergency and I feel like not enough people are talking about it. We are scrambling for formula personally as a family, like trying to make sure that our kid is getting fed. But if I could like look ahead and know that this was going to happen, I would have tried to push myself longer to breastfeed. I think I definitely could have done it, but I more so wanted more of my own individuality and freedom back um, instead of having to always be like on the clock every three hours. And as I get older, I've noticed even a switch within the last two months of Hudson is doing a lot of things on his own and is having a lot of fun just like playing with himself and 
um, you know, with his toys and just learning how to sit up on his own and um, just talk and all of that stuff. So I wish I would have told myself, like, the physical exhaustion will end much sooner than I thought it would. I thought that I would always be exhausted, like in a constant state of exhaustion. But in a way, you have to kind of take control of what you can and prioritize naps during the day for a short time um, and going to bed early, even though, whew, that's tough because sometimes it's like the only time you have to yourself is at night. That, those are the things that I would say um, about like physically preparing. I feel like I did a lot of great things like leading up to the birth of Hudson, um, like seeing a chiropractor, eating certain foods. I've done a lot of home birth and natural birth prep videos you can watch if you're more curious about that. But I feel like the other areas are what are really different and interesting. So the next thing I'll talk about is the spiritual side. So for me, I am a firm believer in Jesus. I follow Jesus every day with my life. I would say um, I'm like Bible believing Christian, but I felt very behind in this area when I became a mom because I felt like I, I didn't prepare myself enough for this. Uh, I was reading a book called the power of a praying parent. And I felt like I was praying over him before I met him, uh, Hudson, and those were all great things. But I needed to be in prayer over myself for the change that needed to happen in me. And yeah, all the things that God wanted to remove from my heart. And I was struggling with patience, with motherhood and naturally like anger would flare up because hormonal sh hormonal shifts um because maybe lack of sleep you know you could li list a lot of like physical things but i truly believe if i was in prayer over myself not just for the birth process i was so focused on the birth process maybe i would have like really embraced the motherhood part a little bit more so i wish i would have been more in prayer like in my journal and um just intentional and in praying over myself and the change that was going to have to happen inevitably but that i would do it in more of a an accepting way rather than like oh this is hard what do i do with this oh okay this is a big one so between nick and i spiritually with the shift in parenthood there was one particular night and i want to share this story because it was so very big shift in our marriage um i think it was two nights before i went into labor nick and i actually were laying on the bed here and i just got really overwhelmed and i just started crying and nick started crying and i don't know what was in us but i think we were just like sitting here embracing that so much was about to change and in a lot of ways we felt like we didn't know what it was going to do to us and we just didn't feel prepared um you know we felt like we had prepared for all that we could and we still knew that there was a lot of unknowns that were ahead of us and i remember him sitting next to me um crying and just saying how in a lot of ways, like he still feels like a kid and he wants to be held by God. Like he can tangibly, like as he was in that moment, just feel the presence of God, like holding him like a kid, like just uh, comforting him in this major shift that was about to happen where he was about to become a dad. And I felt like we had connected on another level on that night uh, because we were just both about to embark on something so new and so different. And we were just saying like how thankful we were for this like preparation 
phase of getting ready to have our lives totally shift in so many ways and I just remember it being so foundational and monumental and I personally believe something broke in me to where I felt more ready to welcome Hudson into the world because I had broken down a lot of fears that night um, and kind of hashed them out with Nick. And I just encourage that in anyone is like with your partner, whether you're, you know, the husband or wife, like it is so cool to be able to have those moments where you're like, okay, we have no idea what's about to kind of happen ahead of us, but we've prepped for all that we can. And we just need to have like open hands with what God wants to do with us and the type of parents he wants to make us. And we need to pray intentionally, you know, over each other's wisdom and strength and um, endurance in such a unique time. And I'm just so glad that we did that. And that wasn't every night. That was literally just, just like one time where it just felt like there was like tangible peace and presence of God with us at a shifting moment. So that's what I would say as far as spiritual. I, I do think like the books do help, the prep preparation books for having a kid, but they're kind of more of a guide of what is already in scripture. Like the power of a praying parent kind of gives you prompts to pray over your child. Uh, but I would just go into your Bible and, and ask God to just search you and to reveal anything in your heart that needs to be given up um, and emptied out. Emotional? Pew! <laughs> Emotional. Okay. Emotional health is tied to hormonal shifts, at least for me. It's a lot of high highs and low lows. That's how it was for me. Maybe it was different for other women, but I feel like it's okay to accept, you know, it's okay. Like, there can be really low, low moments and really, really high, high moments where you know that your baby is only this small for a very short amount of time and you're having such special moments and you're crying out of like pure joy and then the next moment you feel like you're not cut out for this and that there's no way that you were picked to do this um, because surely this is too tough and you're being punked. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It feels like your emotions will lie to you a lot of times in the low moments where you just don't feel adequate and you don't feel like you can go on another day. And I remember telling myself because I was admitting to, who was it? I think it was my counselor and I was just saying, hey, I feel like a practice I've had to do lately is I can make it one more day, just one more day, you know? Not as far as like, oh, I was suicidal, um, but just as far as accepting my new reality versus how it was and how it is now, I can, I can make it through another day. I made it through today and I had vomit in my hair and I had poop on my hand and literally Hudson came out of the womb pooping on me. <laughs> like, like there's so much of that and it's not going to be that way, you know, as they get older and you will learn and shift and change. Um, and so having other moms in my, in my head and in my life was so monumental because I just remember they helped me to dismantle lies that I believed a lot of times when it came to, I feel inadequate and I don't know how I can do this another day because emotionally I'm exhausted. I feel like I cry a lot. I feel like you know, there's surely something wrong with me because emotionally and hormonally I feel out of whack. And those first three months is when, you know, your hormones are at an all time low. So it only makes sense that those are the thoughts that you have and that that goes on. Emotionally, turn a huge corner around months five and six when Hudson started sleeping a lot better. It's crazy how much changes whenever you can sleep better. And I did not take any shame in like 
helping myself sleep with like melatonin and like things like natural teas and things I could do to just to sleep better. This kind of goes hand in hand with it. This is mental. <laughs> okay, so I wish I would have known that these would these lies would have come up um, before I became a mom. Each day that you mom and do all the activities and chores that you may do around the house. For me, I battle the lie that there's not as much purpose in that than there is going to a job. I've had to really bring that to God and say, why am I believing this? Is it because I had a pattern of belief within work that was already in me? where it was kind of like an idol. Like I, I felt like, oh, surely I have more purpose and more value if I'm outputting more to the world. Um, and a lot of my work isn't seen because a lot of things around the house and the role of being a mom, a lot of it is unseen. I had a friend like speak over me, like the most important thing ever is that I am seen, known, and loved by God and that embedding that not just into my mind but into my heart is so healing to me um, and just separating my identity from my work and even my identity as a mom that I, I could easily attach my identity to being a mom and allowing my identity to be just firmly on what I am, which is a child of God, saved, redeemed, loved. And that that is my identity, you know, like not attaching it to being a wife, being a mom, being a creator, being whatever, whatever role, whatever thing I'm doing. Um, and so the mental battle I think that I've noticed a lot of other moms have is that like feeling like they're insignificant or they're not seen because the work that they do does not feel the same as what it may have been previously. Like they may have felt more productive or more focused in whatever else. But I've had to learn that, oh my gosh, being here and raising up another whole human that will be my age one day, that will also have an impact on the world, is so important, especially in a day where he will never not know a world that hasn't had a phone, a computer, like smart tech everything. And so being proactive as a mom to like guard his heart and his mind and pray over just about every square inch of this house like um is so important and shaping another human being is like quite the call and I feel like it's so sad to hear myself even admit sometimes that it feels not significant to do that work but it just I think it can feel monotonous and mundane to do a lot of the same things every day and not have as much variety as I used to in other roles know that that could be a lie that you may have that comes up and just knowing in that moment like that is a lie i am seen this is significant um and i am called to this and it's important you know like it's so much more valuable than a lot of what other people put so much time into energy into every day so those are my four areas of like what i wish i would have known before i became a mom and i share a lot more on instagram so if you don't follow me on there it's chelsea k hurst um, if you guys have any other things that you relate to or things you're prepping for just any comments like feel free to leave them below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these i'm really excited for the next video just